All right, all week long, we've been talking about the push and pull, the battles in Washington, D.C., over the possibility of an, a secret government program that is studying UFO spacecraft and the remains of non-human uh, specimens or, or organisms. Uh, earlier this week, David Grush came on the show to defend what he's been saying, his testimony under oath in Capitol Hill, that there is a secret program that is reverse engineering the spacecraft. He also told me earlier this week that he has first-hand knowledge, not second-hand knowledge, that such a program exists. And all along, uh, he's gotten some pushback notably from famed astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. He has simply said, I need to see evidence. He's got a new book out, his 16th book, if you can believe it. Moments ago, I talked to him about the new book. It's called To Infinity and Beyond, A Journey of Cosmic Discovery. But first, he and I talked about whether or not he believes the latest claims about UFOs, and that could possibly take the cosmic discovery to another dimension. Neil, explain the Fermi paradox to me. It refers to the dichotomy that there's a high probability that extraterrestrial intelligence exists with the fact that we have no evidence of alien life. Where do you land in all that? Yeah, let me just uh, give the backstory on the Fermi paradox. Enrico Fermi, an Italian American physicist, actually did a calculation. He said to himself, if there are alien civilizations out there, and even if they had modest travel technology, maybe they can reach 10% the speed of light. Not the speed of light, not warp drives, just sort of ordinary, really fast technologies. Then one civilization might uh, colonize a planet, and then they would then colonize two planets after that, and each one of the two after that, you go one to two to four to eight. Within a hundred million years or so, given the size of the galaxy, aliens could be in every planet in the galaxy. And that's a much shorter time than the time the galaxy has been around. Mm -hmm. So he concluded that, um, and so he, said, he asked, where are they? And that became known as the Fermi paradox. Yeah. And there's some interesting solutions to that. Maybe interstellar space really is hard, even for brilliant aliens. So that's a that's an easy one to well, talk about. And you're assuming the aliens are brilliant. Maybe they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they could be idiots. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or like Luddites, you know, cavemen. Yeah, I don't want to meet the dumb aliens. Send over the smart aliens. Those are the ones. You know, all these people that talk about crashed flying saucers, I'm saying, Send me the ones that can navigate, okay? I don't want to meet the ones that cross the galaxy and crash on Earth. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Avi Loeb, uh, who's also a physicist, runs the Galileo Project at Harvard. He said, quote, the most efficient path toward new knowledge is through direct evidence. And unfortunately, that was not provided by David Grush, and if it exists, remain a se remains a secret. David Grush this week told me this in response to Dr. Loeb. Take a listen. I, I understand he wants to see proof. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that because I, I need to abide by the law. I'm not here to go to jail. So we have a true transparency issue. And I think the Galileo Project and, and Dr. Loeb, who seems like a nice enough gentleman when I talk to him, needs to lobby the U.S. government for transparency because his astronomy and astrophysics community is being unfortunately degraded and destroyed by not providing this, this information broadly to be studied by highly qualified experts like him and, and other physicists of, of high repute. You're a phys astrophysicist of the highest repute. I'm guessing you'd be first in line to study the evidence if anybody finally brought it out from behind closed doors. Of course, and of course that happened in Mexico. We remember that the alien bodies, they were ridiculed by so many people, but I was actually excited by this. Finally, there's, a, there's an august b congressional body where alien uh, mummies are brought forth. That's the kind of thing that should happen in the American Congress and hasn't. I, I, I corresponded with uh, some of the principals with the, that were involved with shepherding the, the, these Mexican aliens. Actually, they're claimed to be from Peru, the Nazca area of Peru. Right. And the Peruvians wonder how did they end up in Mexico. That's a whole, I don't, I don't know either. But the point is, now that you have them on display, it's intriguing. They look awfully humanoid, by the way, to have come from another planet. They mm -hmm. look more human than most life on Earth looks human, and we have DNA in common. That's a separate issue. Scientifically, that this is a start, and now right. we say, share the data. 
with yeah. other people, shared tissue samples so that other labs can investigate. That's how we roll. I Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.